Former Binance CEO CZ may not be able to leave the United States before sentencing. And Charles Hoskinson of Cardano goes off against the SEC. You got to hear this one. And Google Cloud confirms participation in the Eigenlayer testnet. This is big news. We're going to break this down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, we had multiple reports coming out today that the judge denies the uh, ex-Binance CEO CZ from leaving the United States before sentencing. However, some folks said that this is incorrect reporting. For example, Calvin Chang said, this is incorrect. The judge stayed the ruling pending a full hearing. So uh, there's going to be a hearing up here on whether CZ can leave the United States. I don't think CZ is going to try to go run away and hide, right? He did a full surrender. He stepped on American soil after years of not being uh, in the United States. And he's obviously working with the DOJ, but it looks like some folks are trying to pull some strings to uh, try to keep him in the United States. And he has family in the UAE and much more. But CZ, uh, you know, he's responding to this news saying, hey, this is not uh, correct news. He also tweeted out today, been reading about biotech, thinking about how to use crypto to accelerate research funding there, keep building. So CZ doesn't seem bothered by this news. Now we got some very big news around Coinbase. So Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong joined UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and CEOs from the largest global banks and technology companies in London for the Global Investment Summit. Folks, we know the UK has passed crypto regulations. They are welcoming crypto companies and the EU also passed crypto regulations. So things are moving ahead overseas while the United States continues to drag its feet. So Coinbase said, this group convened to discuss the role of innovation in driving human progress. Blockchain technology and crypto assets are part of a super cluster of new and complementary frontier technologies that present transformative potential for the global economy. The UK is positioning itself at the forefront of this digital revolution. At Coinbase, we are committed to fostering innovation and growth in the UK, our second largest market. It's inspiring to explore opportunities that contribute to the country's financial ecosystem and how new technologies can drive investment, growth, and innovation to the economy. If only the United States can get its act together and pass crypto regulations. Now, here's a prime example. Because of the lack of crypto regulations, we're seeing companies, crypto companies are moving to the Asian markets and much more. So here, uh, Xiao Wang, if I'm saying that right, he is part of the Alliance DAO. He said, I've reviewed close to 10K Alliance DAO applications over the last three years and have observed many trends about our industry from this. Here's one. Since the second half of 2021, the US has slowly been losing its dominance in the number of crypto startups to Asia. He says, and we all know why. So the data doesn't lie. We are seeing the US market share here uh, diminishing while it's growing in Asia. And we saw Hong Kong and many other uh, Asian countries open up their doors, folks, uh, welcoming crypto companies. We know that Hong Kong opened up retail trading to crypto companies or uh, to users, I should say. They've also opened up financing and much more. So the world is moving ahead. And that's a you know one of the great things about crypto. It's a global asset class. It's not dependent on the United States as let's say the dot-com boom was, right? Where a lot of the companies that, uh, or a lot of the innovation and entrepreneurship happened here in the United States. A lot of this is happening globally. And because of the blockchain, you and I can participate regardless of where we are in the world, folks. You can be in Australia, in some country, in Africa, you could be in somewhere in South America. You have a cell phone, you have internet connection, you can participate in this asset class in Web3, folks. Uh, It's pretty amazing. And that's why the potential for the growth of this market is, is exponential. Now, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold, which makes crypto investing easy. Uphold is a great platform that I've been using since 2018. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals on this platform, along with 37 fiat currencies. 
They're available in over 150 countries. And folks, they are secure. They are fully reserved. Your funds are reserved. You can review the audits they've done. So no commingling, no lending out your funds. We want to use safe platforms. So I recommend this platform. I've interviewed the CEO, CFO, and many other representatives. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Now, Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, man, he went off on the SEC. Let me play the clip for you here, and you'll get an idea how angry he is. Then they come in and say it's a security. Okay, well, what the hell does that mean if it's decentralized? How does Bitcoin register? Oh, but it's not. Then explain to me the fucking difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and the rest of the gang. Explain it to me. Like I'm five years old. Run the goddamn Howie test on it and show me the difference between the two. Tell me, is there an expectation of return with the goddamn orange pill moon boys? It's there. <laughs> There's so many different planks and angles that you can take a look at this thing from. And by the way, if you subpoena an attack about three different entities, you could perform a 51% attack on Bitcoin because that's the way the hash power works. But it's decentralized, apparently. And Team Orange gets a complete pass. It's a pathetic fucking joke. Wow. I mean, look, I understand Charles's uh, frustration. The SEC is now targeting Cardano. And I think Charles is starting to feel what the folks at Ripple and the XRP holders were feeling, right? We were alone for many years. A lot of people turned their backs on the uh, XRP community and Ripple. And because of Ripple, a lot of these companies are not going to be able to fight back, including Coinbase, including Cardano. So uh, Charles is absolutely right. There's a lot of hypocrisy and lack of allegiance to the law by the SEC. Gary Genter, as I've said, is a scumbag regulator. And I'm not saying that lightly as a joke. That's what this man is. He's working with corrupt Elizabeth Warren, and they have a clear agenda, and that is to kill these crypto startups so that the TradFi folks can come in and take over. Gary, of course, wants the treasury job as well. So it's unbelievable that the chair of the SEC is acting this way. And Charles, like I said, he's spot on, but we got to fight. We got to fight. Uh, so hopefully Charles um, it can team up with other folks in the industry and fight back because it, you know, divided we fall, united we stand. And we saw the folks at Coinbase, their general counsels and legal counsels started meeting with the Ripple folks, right, to share notes and talk about how they can fight back. We saw Kraken said they're going to fight back against the SEC as well. So Charles, uh, hopefully he can team up with, you know, the different token projects as well as exchanges to fight this. But he's spot on. Here's what attorney John Deaton had to say about Charles's rant here. He said, only Maxis will take issue with uh, Charles's outrage. I don't see how anyone could not objectively understand the frustration. U.S. securities laws need to be coherent and consistently applied across all ecosystems. So he's absolutely right there. Now, regarding crypto regulations, Paradigm Policy Director shared his thoughts. He said, U.S. crypto regulations is likely in a holding pattern until after the 2024 election. Boy, I hope not. But man, I think this is a good call because, you know, the election cycle is going to be crazy. And, you know, Congress, we already see they are all over the place, distracted by different things. And look, so there, there's higher priority items than crypto, of course. You know, there was government shutdown, there's war and all these things happening. But, you know, we can multitask. We can do multiple things at the same time. So if they can get some sort of crypto regulations, at least through the House, get it to the Senate, maybe by early next year, it passes to the Senate, it goes to the president. Uh, fingers crossed. Is that very likely? Probably not. But uh my hope is they can get something. You know, folks like Ryan Sulkis and Masari has said that he his predictions are the ETFs get approved, uh, the GOP wins the uh, or a Republican president wins the next uh, the presidential election, and then crypto regulations are passed. So that'll be till twenty twenty five. But um, you know, this is not going to stop the prices from going up, but it's going to be very hard and very difficult for the industry. And we see Gary Genser is on the loose, just attacking everybody, right? So that's going to be a big problem. But uh, hopefully folks can fight back with the bull market coming back. They'll get make more money. They'll have more money to pay lawyer fees because it is expensive to fight the SEC. Just look at what Ripple had to pay. Um, but there's some big players fighting back like Coinbase and Kraken now. 
So we'll see what happens. But I think uh, Paradigm's policy director may be right here. Now, big news coming from Google Cloud. So Google Cloud confirms participation in the iGen Eigen layer testnet, if I'm saying that right. Exclusive Google Cloud joined more than 65 other operators in the group as the restaking protocol as a mainnet deployment for node operators in the first half of 2024. Folks, we continue to see Google and many big tech companies like Microsoft participating in crypto. Uh, they are building with the technology, partnering with different uh, firms like Chainlink and others, and building new solutions. So very bullish, right? Uh, the TradFi tech, if you want to call them that, or Web2 tech, tech is uh, jumping into Web3, and, and they have to, or they will be disrupted and have their blockbuster moment. So um, you may be saying, what the hell is Eigenlayer, if you never heard about it? It is a restaking protocol that lets Ether, Ethereum be staked on multiple platforms at once. Google Cloud confirmed the cloud computing services participation in the testnet to an email to BlockWorks. Google Cloud declined to comment on whether it has plans to move to Eigenlayer's mainnet or if the protocol will be added to Google Cloud's blockchain node engine. Uh, Eigenlayers also couldn't confirm whether Google Cloud would remain as a node operator once node operation goes to mainnet. Representatives said they expect Google Cloud's con support to continue since the goal of testnet is to prepare for mainnet. So uh, Eigenlayer went live for stakers who earned rewards by locking in their staked ETH. In June, operators who enhance security and allow stakers to delegate assets are still in testnet. So Folks, incredible that Google and other big tech companies are getting involved in crypto, and that's a validation of the technology, that it's here to stay, it's disruptive, and they better get on board. Now, we got news around Solana. So Solana MEV developer Jito, or Jito, if I'm saying it right, J-I-T-O, launching a governance token. So the Jito Foundation is uh, launching a governance token aimed at both managing and spurring development of the Solana-based liquid staking protocol. There will be a total supply of 1 billion JTO tokens. So Jito Labs builds infrastructure designed to mitigate negative impacts of maximum extractable value on Solana. By launching the token, the Jito Foundation uh, seeks to empower community members to have a direct impact on the decision-making and direction of the Jito network, the organization said in a statement. Uh, last month, the Solana Foundation said nearly a third of stake is running through the Jito Labs client. In Monday's announcement, Jito Foundation said the Jito MEV network of validators is now being utilized by over 40% of Solana network stake weight. So great to see that there's building on Solana here, folks. Um, I still am not 100% bullish on Solana. Don't get me wrong. I have some of the tokens. I'm just playing the market swing trading it. Do I believe Solana is going to be a big winner in the long term? I'm not sure about that with the blockchain downtimes they've had. But look, they do have developers working on it. They do have a lot of things going on. So uh, I'm willing to change my opinion based on the facts and if things improve. But I'm still not 100% sold here. Well, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. What do you think about Charles's uh, rant about the SEC? And folks, uh, don't forget to subscribe for my free email newsletter. Link in the description. Also, please, please, please follow me on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. It supports the podcast. It doesn't cost you anything. Just uh, a follow, folks. And I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll talk to you all later.